Hey guys, I'm Keanu Yeager here in the halls of Scott Community High School. Later on in this broadcast, I'll be bringing you the latest issues on the iPads each student is provided with in the high school and the middle school. Also, we'll get a look at how a single shoe box can change a life. You're watching the Beaver Backtrack on the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Hello Scott City, welcome to the December edition of the Beaver Backtrack. I'm Clarissa Ratzlaff. Today we're going to see coverage on a successful coach and a successful restaurant, as well as musicals, both big and small. But first, let's see how a shoebox can go a long way. Jacob and Christian explain what Operation Christmas Child is all about and the true blessings of the gift of giving. Christian? Christmas is just around the corner and it's soon time to see what is hiding under that wrapping paper. But what is the real meaning of Christmas? Some might say spending time with their family or even opening up presents on Christmas Day. Think about all those children around the world that don't get to feel the joy of opening up a present on Christmas Day. Operation Christmas Child gives you an opportunity to share what the real meaning of Christmas is about. Operation Christmas Child is designed to get gifts to children that do not get gifts um, at any time all throughout the world. Samaritan's Purses Ministry Operation Christmas Child gives you an opportunity to share what the real meaning of Christmas is about. National Collection Week has ended, but don't let that stop you from sending in your box to the Processing Center in North Carolina. It was a neat experience to get to pack the shoe boxes um, and to uh, put the gospel tracks in them to be able to send them all around the world. You realize how much other kids do not have and sometimes you get boxes that aren't very full and try to put more in them so a kid actually has something. When the shoe boxes arrive, they are put through a series of inspections. These inspections help make sure the boxes aren't damaged before they get to their destination. These boxes are then shipped to children all around the world. Christmas isn't just about giving. It's also a time to remember the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Christian Wolf, reporting for BBN TV News. This past month, I have had the opportunity to speak with Coach Glenn O'Neill, Scott City's most winningest coach. I have been working on a documentary over Coach O'Neill and both of his families. This documentary will be airing on both Channel 12 and 640 this coming month. But for now, Here's just a little piece of what you'll get to see. Ben O'Neill for the lead. No good. Rebound, Joey Murray. Ron Baker leads it up. Yes! With two seconds to go. Got City Star with two. are the Kansas Class 3A State Football Champions. And that's the game. Scott City has done it. They're the Class 3A State Champions. What a game. The latest uproar flooding the halls of Scott Community High School has to do with the iPads the school provided for each student last year. iPads were originally, I think, purchased to be educational tools. 
there was a good portion of the student body that was probably not using their iPads responsibly. I have heard a lot of other teachers comment that um, you know they really feel like this could put an end to that problem. The problem? Too many students failing classes. Unfortunately, the iPads have distracted students from getting their work done during the school day because they have the freedom to have whatever apps that they want. Our principal, Mr. McCormick, needed to take action. A lot of it had to do with eligibility was a big thing and uh, the distractions during class, kids not on task. Uh, it was an opportunity for them to be distracted and if we take those opportunities away maybe they will be more successful in the classroom. Each student's first hour teacher was required to go through their iPads to delete any apps that weren't considered educational or simply not needed in the classroom. Honestly it really doesn't bother me other than my games which I'm kind of sad about. I feel like they could have controlled it more like teachers could have controlled it more. If you're playing on games, if you're on Netflix or something then it's taken away. We can't forget how useful the iPads have been to the students and teachers here at SCHS. For now, iPads will remain for educational purposes only. The information you need is right there for you. It's, it's been a really good tool. It just needs to be used as that tool and not a toy. The change to our iPads has definitely impacted our school in many ways. Every year, the Scott Community High School puts on a musical for the community to enjoy. This year, the music department favored us with The It Girl. Macy Burning sat down with Sherilyn Wassinger, director of the musical, to learn more about this year's production. I'm Macy Burning here in the Scott Community Auditorium where this year's musical, The It Girl, took place. This musical was about a girl named Betty Lou Spence falling in love with her boss, Jonathan Waltham. Sherilyn Wassinger, director of this musical, recently resigned from her teaching duties at Scott Community High School. We asked her how it affected her directing of this performance. It takes a lot of stress off of me that I don't have to be in, in my classroom all day um, teaching class and I don't have, you know, tons of papers to grade or assignments or lesson plans to come up with, so that, made, that end of it made it a lot simpler. I think that I was a much better director because I had a lot more time just to dig into the 1920s and, just, and costuming and all of that. Take, take the stress off and just let me follow my passion, which is the theater. Twelve people made up this year's cast, which is on the downside compared to recent years. So I loved our cast this year. It was just, it was just family and we were pretty close, the cast and the crew. And it was nice to just work with a small bunch of, of students that really, you know, wanted to give the time and everybody on that stage really wanted to be there. So we just kind of fell in love with our cast this year. They were awesome. Some people may ask, well, what's the importance of a musical? All you do is sing, act, and dance. Well, according to Sherilyn Wassinger, it is much more than singing, acting, and dancing. It's not my goal to produce Broadway actors. I just want kids to come away with that, knowing that, okay, the theater is a big group and, and, and diverse, and everybody can find a spot somewhere in the theater. If we have a good, strong theater program, right, beh right beside it is a good um, vocal music program and a good instrumental music program. A good theater program will back up all the other core classes as well. And then also just, we have a lot of fun. You know, we want, we want people to have a good time and enjoy. I think that it's important for us to keep this program alive and, you know, to do whatever we need to do in order to make sure that that happens because the fine arts are important in schools and uh, too many schools today, right now, are slashing those programs and, you know, saying we just can't afford them or it, our kids don't have the time anymore, whatever the reason, and we need to make sure that our stay solid. From the Marie de Geer Auditorium in Scott Community High School, this has been Macy Burning with the Beaver Broadcasting Network. The It Girl was a fun production to watch. For sure, they always do a really good job. But the high school isn't the only one who has recently had a performance. The elementary school students' annual Christmas concert was held earlier this month. Nancy Green has always had successful productions in the past, and this year is no exception. Judy Gutierrez has more on the story. 
The third and fourth graders held their annual Christmas program this December the 3rd. As usual, it was directed and created by Nancy Green. I've been doing kids programs now. I did the K through six for nine years in Leota and 11 years at the middle school here. And this is my 10th year here at the elementary school, so 30 years. <laughs> My favorite part of doing the Christmas programs is the camaraderie and teamwork. Everybody gets excited working together and it's fun to see the kids when they take ownership of it and, um, and you can see their sense of accomplishment in it. Whenever we have a program, I usually divide it up into movement and solos, uh, speaking parts, if you big speaking parts, small speaking parts, and kids sign up for what they would like to do. It may be one thing they sign up for or several things. And uh, then go about choosing from that section. I also ask teachers what their recommendations are for the bigger parts. But I try to always give students something that they would be interested in so they don't end up doing something they just hate. Uh, there is a lot of stress doing programs and I think for anybody doing a musical or a music teacher or a coach for any kind of sport and uh, my probably my biggest way of coping with it is is just spending time with friends and reading and uh, just doing some quiet time away from all the busy activities. It takes a long time to find music for programs. That's probably the hardest part because uh, you have to think of what works best for the group and um, I always have files of music that are ready for, for separate years. I have, I call them possibility files. Just last night I found one already for next year's Christmas program that I just happened upon. The future of uh, music and our music program here in Scott City, I feel very confident about. I'm very encouraged by it. I feel a great amount of support from um, from our administrators and from people in the community and a lot of encouragement so that we can continue making great music here in Scott City. It's always worth it in the end. I've never had a time where I've regretted doing that. Once again, this Christmas concert has been a success. We look forward to seeing what Mrs. Green has in store for us next year. From the Scott City Elementary School, this is Judy Gutierrez reporting for BBN TV 12. Scott City's growing appetites bring new opportunity for the food service industry. Tate's Restaurant here in Scott City has recently been opened to provide a new taste to the town. Robert Rosas caught up with Tate Roberts, owner of the restaurant, to uncover the story. I'm standing in front of Tate's, located on Scott City's Main Street. With a new restaurant business in town, it's only natural to wonder how it came to be. We talked with the restaurant's chef, Tate, to hear about his journey in Kansas City his return to his hometown, and opening his very own restaurant. From a young age, Tate Roberts has always had a strong interest in cooking. I think it was inherited, kind of a genetic thing. Whether it was making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or, I don't know, even watching a cooking show. With this dream and passion in the back of Tate's mind, he left Scott City to attend an art school. I still was known as the, the cook on campus. After finally deciding to pursue his dream, Tate had attended and graduated from a culinary arts school in Kansas City, and soon after found work in Kansas City. What made me follow that passion through Scott City was through the teachers. I'd say just a few influential teachers that kept me following my goals. You know, Mr. Ellis said always stay creative, and Ms. Hunter always, always follow your dreams. So then I get turned into an adult, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old, I was pushed to follow that dream, and that's when it started. Establishing a name for himself, Tate had achieved many awards and had been featured on both TV and newspaper publications. And I had won the, uh, the Iron Chef Kansas City in 2007 and 2008 back-to-back -back years, and that was about the point I realized that I was pretty good. But still, the constant criticisms came daily through my shifts at work. 
With a hectic work environment and constant pressure, Tate felt something needed to change. You know, I had no idea going into cooking how much work was involved in it. Tate decided to move back to Scott City to open his own restaurant. I was unemployed in Kansas City, making close to 90000 a year, went to making zero overnight. I wanted to resort back to that, that commonality between peace in my life and the reality of life, and it's always been cooking it's right there. So I couldn't think of a better place to, to do it in my hometown. With many difficulties along his path, Tay had found his opportunity and had finally opened his restaurant. You know, the food quality itself, it's good. It's nothing like I've ever cooked before. I'd never cooked a, in, a, in a fry burger type of joint. It always been kind of steak, seafood, fine dining, small portion, beautiful food. But that was $40, $50 a plate type of food. And this has to be affordable. With a lot of support and hard work, Tate's has become a success. I could not remember the first two months of opening this place. It's unreal. There was one week in particular we went through 520 pounds of ground beef. Now, if you do the math on that, that's over 1,100 hamburgers. Still thankful for his experiences, Tate offers some heartfelt advice to others. I really want to encourage other chefs that are struggling out in the world to maybe resort back to their little hometowns or find a small town that is needing a, an establishment to eat. Coming back to Scott City was probably the best decision I ever made. With six success in Scott City, it's sure to have a bright future ahead. This is Robert Elsass reporting from the Beaver Broadcasting Network. It's time to wrap up this edition of the Beaver Backtrack. We always appreciate our viewers and the support from the community. If you have any feedback on past projects or ideas for future ones, we'd be happy to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Kiana Yeager. And I'm Clarissa Ratzlaff. Thanks for tuning in. BBN TV Channel 12, Scott Community High School at its best.